Hi everyone and welcome to What in the World, I'm Monica Hernandez. Today's episode is an exciting one because we'll be looking at all things Thanksgiving, from its history, traditions, food, and celebration. So grab some pumpkin pie and get cozy. The show starts now. Our Thanksgiving story begins December 11, 1620, when the pilgrims sailed on the Mayflower to Plymouth Rock in search for a better life. Little did they know, they were about to face a harsh winter upon their arrival. Luckily, the Native Americans stepped in and helped the pilgrims survive. Their hardship would be compensated for the following year with a bountiful harvest. To celebrate, the pilgrims and Native Americans gathered for a feast in the autumn of 1621. Back then, it did not mark a Thanksgiving observance as it does today. Instead, it was more of a traditional English harvest festival. In fact, even the food they served was different. It is not certain that wild turkey was on the menu, but they did dine on fish, berries, watercress, lobster, dried fruit, clams, venison, and plums. Unfortunately, the beloved pumpkin pie was not served because of the diminished supply of flour. Instead, they ate boiled pumpkin and fried cornbread. The feast was not repeated again until June of 1676 in Charleston, Massachusetts. It was a day of Thanksgiving for the fortune and security of the newly established community. But Thanksgiving as we celebrate it today did not come about until 1863. Sarah Joseph Hale, a magazine editor, wrote hundreds of letters to governors, ministers, newspaper editors, and U.S. presidents to request a day to offer to God our tribute of joy and gratitude for the blessings of the year. After a long 40-year writing campaign, U.S. President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed the last Thursday in November as National Thanksgiving Day. Finally, in 1941, Congress sanctioned Thanksgiving as a legal holiday. Without Hale's efforts, Thanksgiving probably never would have become the enduring holiday we look forward to every year. It's Thanksgiving Day and you just ate a feast for dinner. What's next? One of the most cherished pastimes is watching football on TV. The tradition dates all the way back to Thanksgiving of 1869 when the young American cricket club played against the Germantown Cricket Club in Philadelphia. Seven years later, Princeton University played against Yale University in the first Thanksgiving rivalry game. From 1876 to 1881, it became a national championship game, and more universities picked up the tradition in 1885, such as the University of Michigan against the University of Chicago. Today, the Thanksgiving football tradition has been carried over into the NFL, but it was not founded until 1920. Every year, the Chicago Bears played the Chicago Cardinals from 1922 to 1933. However, in 1934, the Chicago Bears played in Detroit against the Lions each year until 1938. Thanksgiving games stopped during World War II, but that didn't stop Detroit from ending the tradition. The Lions continued their Thanksgiving monopoly until 1966, when television networks asked the Dallas Cowboys to play a late afternoon game every year. The Lions and the Cowboys hosted the only two Thanksgiving games until 2006. At that point, the NFL decided to make its own game for the holiday. This year, the Bears played against the Lions, the Bills against the Cowboys, and the Saints against the Falcons. For next year, if you manage to skip the food coma, families can also have a game of their own at home and keep the tradition alive. This year will mark the 93rd annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, one of the most celebrated attractions in New York. During the 1920s, Macy's wanted to showcase the grand opening of the Herald Square store after it was expanded to cover an entire city block stretching from Broadway to 7th Avenue. And what better way to celebrate than with a parade? Although it was held on Thanksgiving morning, the parade was actually called the Christmas Parade. This was a tactic to draw more shoppers into the store for a holiday shopping spree. In the first parade, people came to see animals such as elephants march down the street. There were also Macy's employees who dressed up in costumes. And we can't forget the horses that pulled the floats, including the highlight of the parade, Santa Claus. It wasn't until 1927 when it became the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. 
At this point, the zoo animals were replaced with giant character balloons. The debut of a helium-filled Felix the Cat marked the ongoing signature attraction of the parade. This year, the parade's giant balloon lineup included beloved characters such as Snoopy, Smokey Bear, SpongeBob SquarePants, Pikachu, and much more. There were also over 30 themed floats full of color and excitement, and 20 performers, including notable music artists like the Black Eyed Peas, Billy Porter, Edina Menzel, and Mia Michelle. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is a memorable experience everyone should have. It's the perfect way to welcome the holiday season while having a great time with our friends and family. What did you eat for Thanksgiving this year? There are so many dishes to make on this special holiday. We want to make and eat everything, and that's why we end the night in a food coma. But it's worth every delicious bite. There is one dish, however, that everyone eats for Thanksgiving. Turkey. <laughs> Side dishes vary depending on what region you live in, but turkey is the most important Thanksgiving dish. But why? Turns out it's a mystery. No one knows how or why turkey earned the honoring place at the table every year. But historians have a few theories. When early American settlers dined with Native Americans, historians said fowl and beef were in the menu. Although they can't recall what type of fowl they ate, they do have letters written by Edward Winslow, a pilgrim who mentioned a turkey hunting trip before the meal. Another theory is from the 16th century when a Spanish ship sunk on its way to attack England. Queen Elizabeth received word of the news while eating goose for dinner. She ordered another goose be made to celebrate the shipwreck. Historians said the settlers were inspired by the queen's actions and decided to make turkey instead of goose. Finally, turkey is a native bird of North America, so its abundance might have made food easier to acquire. Aside from turkey, some popular side dishes include potatoes, stuffing, sweet potato casserole, green bean casserole, and so much more. Anyone else ready for next year's Thanksgiving? My favorite thing about Thanksgiving is probably how everyone acts around this time of year. Like I feel like everyone just gets a little bit nicer and everyone's like a little more relaxed. The whole atmosphere around Thanksgiving, I don't know what it is about October to December. It, there's something quite magical about it. I just like that we really spread how grateful we are for the people around us, and it's just a time to appreciate. I love that Thanksgiving gives an excuse for everyone to get together um, after a long semester is done. We have a very large get-together in my house, so our dining room table is gets expanded and then another one gets added to it and we usually have about 30 people sitting around it. We kind of just hang out downstairs, we do puzzles together, we watch movies together, we really like watching the Harry Potter movies together. We have everybody over, um, everybody always comes to my house, it's kind of, you know, that's where my family hangs out, so it's really nice, you know, my grandparents come, my uncles come, my aunts come, so the whole entire family is there and we just enjoy each other's presence. We invite about 10 to 15 families that are close to us and um, we all have a potluck and we eat lots of yummy food and we also add an Indian twist to our Thanksgiving dishes. Probably the stuffing because we have a recipe that my grandpa make, or made, it's one of his, his recipe. Um, so we make that every year and it's definitely my favorite thing that we eat. I'm a big mashed potato person um, and stuffing. And I really, my family makes this um, sweet potato pie. It's not like a pie, it's like a casserole, but it's spicy, so it has like jalapenos in it like sour cream and cheese on it's so good. I mean, since I'm Italian, I love eating my mom's lasagna. She makes lasagna every Thanksgiving, and I'm a big stuffing person. Stuffing is probably up there on the Thanksgiving dishes as opposed to the Italian dishes. Obviously the turkey, because we do put Indian spices in there to make it more um, traditional to us, but, um, I like that we also get like samosas and mashed potatoes and cranberry sauce and all the good stuff. This year I am thankful that everyone in my family is happy and healthy 
especially because we have a new addition to my family. My cousin just had a baby. I'm very thankful for my friends. Um, my first, I'm a junior this year, so the first two years of college. I, I went home a lot. I really like to see my family, but now I feel as though a lot of my friends have become my family. What I'm thankful for this year is that everybody is happy, everyone's healthy, and that's all I could really ask for, you know? It doesn't matter what, what else is going on. If everybody's happy and healthy, then you know what? You know it's gonna be a good upcoming next year. I'm thankful for my parents because they've been there for me through all of my hard times and all the good times and I wouldn't be the person who I am today without them. That's all we have for today. I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving full of family, friends, and yummy food. I'm Monica Hernandez and this has been One in the World. Happy Holidays!